Hey Northside and welcome uh, to week six of the Yes series. Uh, tonight we're talking uh, the best Yes. And as we kind of dive in, uh, I just want to give a quick overview of the journey that we've been on up until this moment because we began it uh, week one with a better yes and just this invitation to identity of drop your nets and come and follow me. Uh, we moved into a louder yes, which was an invitation to a new rhythm, a new pace, uh, new priorities. Uh, then from there, an unexpected yes with the invitation of Matthew uh, that the kingdom is bigger than we ever expected to a deeper yes in week four. Uh, again, an invitation to surrender of who Jesus is uh, a deeper identity. Uh, then last week, a communal yes of how we live this out uh, together. And then finally, tonight, uh, the best yes, which is really an invitation uh, to live in obedience as we follow God. So with all that in mind and groups tonight, uh, you're going to be tackling a question of what is the one thing you've learned? What's the one thing that's resonated uh, to you for the series? So that's where I want to begin tonight to throw that to Nate for you. What's the one thing that's been resonating with you throughout the Yes series? You know, I, uh, for me, this is what I love. And I think this is the timeless uh, truth of God's word is, uh, you know, we have Jesus living life. We're living our life now and exactly what he's speaking into life then is exactly what we need to hear right now in the midst of a pandemic of crazy. You know, we, we chatted about in two weeks, it'll be a year, mm -hmm. you know, since we shut down and since the world shut down and all this other stuff. And you go, Jesus's words couldn't be more real for us. And for me, the one thing is I'm like, that's what I need to keep coming back to is like, even right now in the midst of uncertainty, just obey, mm -hmm. just obey his, the spirit, obey what he's calling me to do. And it's almost in like a rebuilding time right now. Mm -hmm. The yeah. world, you just go, it's a great chance to just rebuild on the on the foundation of who he is. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put you on the spot. <laughs> Andy was holding out on me today and uh, there was a honk. There, yeah. Somebody's excited about our- They're, they're uh, excited about whatever I'm gonna say. About, about, they're like, go oh, Andy. <laughs> Two great quotes that I could have used in the sermon that would have made it better. <laughs> But you said no instead of yes. No, actually, you came up with them later. But share these. These are incredible, man. Yeah, well, two things in preparation just for the conversation. Uh, one uh, was uh, from a guy by the name of Dan Spader. And why we didn't find this before the Yes series, I don't know. Uh, but uh, he wrote this, Yes is a word of obedience, and obedience is God's love language. Yeah, where was that, you know, months ago when we were putting together? This could have been a one-week series. Yeah, that was it. You didn't need to do six. Just read the quote, let it change your life. But no, the second uh, thing that we came across is, uh, the true father of Christ will not ask, if I embrace this truth, what will it cost me? Rather, he will say, this is truth. God, help me walk in it. Let come what may. Uh, that was A.W. Tozer. Uh, so, man, it's as we're talking about the best yes, uh, who Jesus uh, is, that that big choice that he had to make. I mean, because that's what he's praying. Um, either, either it's my will or God's will. Uh, and he's wrestling with that. And he takes that step to say, it's God's will. I'm yeah. going to follow uh, in obedience. Um, yeah. And so to talk a little bit about that, you said this in the sermon tonight. Uh, being a Superman fan, this just it stuck out with me, so I wrote it down. But uh, you said, uh, sometimes we confuse Jesus with Superman, meaning... Sometimes we can't connect with Jesus because all we see is the Savior, uh, the God side, but Jesus is both fully God and fully man. So dive a little bit deeper uh, into yeah. that. And, uh, uh, verse 34 of, of Mark 14, it just I just had to sit there and just read it where he, you know, he does what we do. You know, he, he, he has the 12 disciples and then he gets away with the three, Peter, James, and John which we all do, like if we're going to share, it's not, I mean, with our life group, it's like all life groups, we, we share a lot, but it, but there's only maybe one or two in the life group that we would like really share hmm. everything, which is normal. Yeah, that, that's not wrong. That's probably healthy. Uh, and you see Jesus doing that. And then he just gets him away and goes, guys, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He's just like, Guys, I'm dying here. Yeah. Like, I physically, emotionally, and you go, you think about it, he's never experienced sin before. He's never experienced separation from the Father before. And I got to imagine he's never experienced anything as painful as the just the sheer physicality of the cross before. 
Yeah. And you go, you got everything relationally, emotionally, mentally, physically happening. And you go, he has felt it all. And so for me, I'm just taken back going, my Savior has felt everything I felt and more. He resonates with me. You know, yeah. I've, I've been not resonating with him going, I don't know if he really knows what I'm going through. Because we do that with a lot of other people. Well, you know, you know me, but you really don't know what I'm going through. And it's true, right? Mm. Like we, we, we don't really know what each other are navigating fully, but he does. And it just hit me. I'm like, dude, he is closer than I've ever thought. He knows more about what I'm going through than what I could ever uh, dream of. And you go, that's not Superman. Superman's steel, right? Superman's yeah. no heart. Right? <laughs> you know, Superman is, you just go, there, there's, there's, there's no feel. He, he's got skin, but he's not human. Mm-hmm. And Jesus is God, yet he's skin and he's flesh, uh, as, as God intended man to be. And it's, it's, you just go, this is, he's a savior, but he's special. Like, this is special. Yeah. That w- of what we have in him. Yeah. Well, that's always the thing of, I mean, he didn't have to walk through that. No. So anytime he could have played the God card and be like, I'm out. Yeah. Uh, but what I love, uh, you talked about this at the end uh, of the message about uh, that power comes from prayer. Uh, and I think it's, it's so true as we talk about that choice of either it's my will or God's will, my will or God's will, that the only way you get back up is if you go on God's will and his power. Yeah. Like that's, that's it because that's, I mean, that's, I mean, that's obedience uh, when life is good, when life is tough, that the only way we, we stand back up uh, to move into what's next is God's power because yeah. our power won't, won't, won't stand it. up to that. No, uh, we'll, we'll hit that wall real fast, uh, real fast. So, um, yeah, I mean, as we kind of wrap that up, I mean, I think this is kind of where we end uh, the series. I know we could talk a lot more. Uh, on obedience and the power of God, uh, but I think that's a good place uh, to yeah. end uh, with this yes series. So now I don't know if you have anything to add, or we just yeah. I think the, I think the biggest thing for me too. I mean, even in the workbook at the end with the rule of life, you know, our hope and prayer. The big takeaway would I mean, and you summarized it with that quote from Spader about obedience. That in your group, mm-hmm. that what what God planted in this series, and even just the concept of yes, is something that sticks around not just for like this year or or in the coming weeks but it's something that you and your group just practice and celebrate together what what's god either one what did you say yes to this week that god was prompting and and i get to come to group going man i said yes to him uh or there's the sharing of going man i feel like god's calling me to something on this and i didn't get to share much of it but i feel like this last month i've had more conversations about people's career uh crushing consequences uh either from choices they made or what's going on and it's all of them are opportunities to say yes and i think the more that we can just capture from this series like this is just going to be ingrained in our dna as a church and as a group that like we we are people of yes and obedience to jesus yeah and that's i think we we talked about just before that it's uh it's six week series of yes but from here it's many more yeses Yep. to come. It's a daily yes. It's a moment by moment yes. It's a weekly yes that uh, that it's a season that this is only the beginning of what's yeah. to come. And so with that, I guess we'll, we will end there. And uh, as you begin the yes series in your group, uh, we began with a rhetorical question of what is God calling you to say yes to this season or what is he calling you to say no to this season? So in your group uh, tonight, you're actually going to talk about that question because again, uh, from uh, our yeses, it uh, gives us a deeper no to things, yeah. uh, and it gives us a deeper yes uh, to things. So talk about that in your group, uh, and thanks for coming on the Yes Journey with us. Yeah.